Ah, uh, so. Let's see, how do I, how do I, how do I, I didn't make any plans about this intro. Greetings, Tested fans, Adam Savage here in my cave. Today's one day build is another shop infrastructure build. Behind me is the sorting container I made for all of my staplers. Yeah, for all of my staplers, nail guns, etc., uh, and a few additional power tools. Oh my God, that's where the circular saw is. <laughs> I forgot that I put it there. I forgot that I put it there and I like misplaced it last week and I had to go ask my son to return my corded circular saw. Whoops. Okay, so this, uh, this container is radically successful in its integration into the shop. It fits in a space that was a no man's land. Um, and on top of it, I had a Sortimo case one of these guys, an extra one. And it was full of the staples and nails of various sizes, but it was not an efficient distributor of those staples and nails. And the fact is, I now have enough staples and nails of different types and different lengths that I really, really, really need <coughs> better access to them. I'm coughing because the smoke is covering San Francisco today. If you're wondering when this was shot, this was shot during the fires and the parts per million is around 150 in the city right now. Yeah, we're all feeling it. Anyway, it's time to build a proper sorter for the nails and staples to go with the nailers and staplers. And it's gonna go right on top of this cart. So I may wheel this cart out and uh, start to figure out how to make that container. That is where my sorter is gonna live, right there. Uh, so here are the Sortimo sorters that have my various sizes of narrow crown staples, nail, uh, I think those are 16 or 18 gauge nails, uh, 23 gauge nails, uh, T50 staples, and I actually, I possess a wide crown stapler and I need to stock up on some wide crown staples. Right now, the only size I have, hold on, let me hold these up to my arm, are one and, one and three quarter inch wide crown staples. Uh, so I'm gonna have to just accommodate for, I'm gonna give myself five sizes of wide crown staples. Um, everything has to live here on this footprint and it can't go higher than 15 inches because that's how much room I have in there. And I think I'm going to build this entire cabinet out of this. Uh, I think this is eighth inch Luan. Uh, and I'm going to build it in a tab and slot construction. So it should be a lot of measuring and figuring at the beginning and then a very fast assembly at the end. But we shall see. Oh, oh, I am also, once I get these in those contain, once I get all of these in the container that goes here, that's when I'm actually gonna implement a brand new um, visual system for parsing which staples I need to use. Uh, that's gonna be cool. All right, let's get, let's get started. I have all of the pieces of wood cut out. I am going to make this uh, sorter for staples, eight bins across and three bins high. That gives me 32 spaces. I have 31 bins, gives me one extra space. Um, these are the sides. They will get uh, slots sawn in them on the table saw here. And then these are the 10 pieces that make up the body. These are the horizontals, these are the verticals. What I need to do is make some careful measurements on these and on these in order to make the slices that I will make so that these can all tab and slot together. 
and it's going to be a little bit laborious. It's going to take a little time. My horizontal pieces are cut out. I am. I made this job easy. I forgot to say this at the front. I made this job easy by choosing a three a three ply Luan plywood that's the exact width of my table saw blade. And that makes these slots very easy to do the math on and figure out and uh, get them right. So these pieces, when I'm done, will all do this business. Now, here's the thing about tab and slot is you can actually go too far with these. I mean, sorry, you have my permission to go farther than the halfway point because they can go a little farther and be brought back into orientation. Uh, plus, you'll notice I did each cut twice because I was bilaterally symmetrical. Um, all of that is the longest way of saying, I'm really pleased with how these went. Uh, it's now time to do the verticals. And normally I don't like bringing my hands into that kind of orientation with a table saw, but um, with my ability to hold it steady, I felt comfortable doing that. Uh, and I thought that that was actually a little bit uh, better for me than using the sled for this, just for getting the measurements right. Your results may vary. Stay safe. Um, now it's time to cut the verticals. I made a mistake. Uh, it's not a critical mistake because I can recover from it, but I said I was doing eight by three high, I'm doing eight by four high. I just I had a little brain fart. It's not, tw I, and I said it, I said eight by three high, which gives me 32 bins. Everyone should have understood that my brain was not working. So eight by four bins. Yes, time to cut the verticals. Right, and so I need this, right. Okay, here we go. All right. I have all my pieces of wood cut out. There we go. Um, it is a total of 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 pieces of wood. There's a particular reason I love tab and slot construction. Um, it maximizes the engineering ability of the plywood and minimizes the amount of space needed for that engineering. So I get the most amount of structure for the least amount of additional structure required to hold that structure together, right? If I had, at any rate, I love tab and slot. I've been doing it since I was making my first tool sorters in my toolboxes in the 90s. Um, and you will see just how quickly this goes together because I'm just gonna let it free roll. I mean, they may time lapse later but I'm going to free roll this. So I'm going to get a little bit of glue because I do want, I do want it to be permanent. I'm going to get my 22 gauge nailer and I'm going to put some small nails in this. Oh, I've already got them. Some 5 8 inch nails are perfect. <clears throat> we'll get some air supply over here. Air supply. They were such a great band. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do the tabs and the slots first. Uh, I'm just, I'm so excited about this going together. It's literally been an hour since I started. These are very fast constructions when they happen. So, um, I'm simply just gonna do one. Yeah. It gets a little bit fiddly where you just gotta kind of. Come on, come on. Anyone who's done this knows this particular dance. It's 
not it's not overly complicated. It's just uh, oh, ah. excellent. That should make the third one much easier. But again, my tolerance. This is so classic me. The tolerance is just a little too tight. A little. Oh, yeah. Nothing that a little tappy tap won't help. Oh, yeah. Let's just double check. This is so I don't make the watch them die inside subreddit, and that is fantastic. Okay, so now that, look at that. There is almost no way you could make, you could more maximally use the space allotted for 32 bins. There, there, there really is almost no way you could make a lighter, faster structure that took up less space. I appreciate that. I love that about you, Jerry. Uh, okay, that, so we're gonna, You can hear when it's hit bottom for the most part. Yeah, give or take. Okay. That guy. Now. Okay. I for Did I forget to put glue on this? It's not where glue is super important. Where glue is super important is more on the top and the bottom. Yes, yes, right there. And that will help hold this in a nice orientation. This, this is going together so fast. Oh, right, 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 right. I almost forgot. I'm gonna put this on and then I've got something to do with the next one. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue here. Um, I want to be clear, like I built that, I built that stand for my nailers a few months ago with the understanding that the, that the bin I had for the staples and nails would need to get rebuilt. Lest you imagine that I always have a grand plan, it took me months to figure out exactly what size that thing should be. Yeah. It did, it took me months. So, here we go. This, okay. So, I have some of my bins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Some of my bins only go halfway and I don't want them to go farther. So, I actually need to sock in uh, just a little stop. And I'm just gonna, you know what? I'm just gonna do that with hot glue. Just gonna do that with hot glue the fastest. And it'll be a reversible, a reversible fix. Uh, but I have to cut. I'm only gonna do seven. If I have to add another one later, I will. Um, and I'm just going to use, uh, I don't want to use that. Yeah. On the bottom. Perfect. I'll be right back while my hot glue gun gets heating up. I was all set to use this piece of wood and then I found a scrap over on the bandsaw and I just cut these guys out. It's, they're perfect. They're absolutely perfect. So we're going to just put one. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do, just like that. I'm gonna have a snack while my glue gun heats up. All right, I've got my pieces glued in. I'm about to glue in the top or the bottom. I'm not sure which is which. This is. 
Um, when I say it took me months to figure out the structure for this, um, I know that this doesn't seem like the kind of structure that would require months of research or thinking about it, but really the issue I had <coughs> was one of information. I didn't have enough information for to come up with a design. Um, and what I mean by information is I didn't know what I needed it to hold. So I was thinking, oh, should it hold T50 staples? Well, that's one kind of solution. Should it hold, um, should it hold all of the staples in the shop or should it hold some of them? Or, you know, I, you, have to, you have to come to answers to these questions in order to figure out the structure that you want to build to hang on to stuff. So that's what I spent months doing, kind of assessing as I was going on projects, what sort of, I'm gonna get up. We'll go with the narrow crown just for, yeah, there we go. Not going anywhere. Yep. Okay, so uh, let's see. This, that's not the front, that's the front, that's the front. So, and these guys go on the bottom, terrific, awesome. Oh, right, and now this guy goes on the back. Right, okay. So this is one where I really didn't give myself enough room and this is the last big piece of Luan I have, is it? Jeez, got him something. Oh, I see you down there. Ugh, hidden pieces of wood. In the shop. Nope, that one's too good. <sighs> well, that would do it, but it's weird. It's just a tiny bit too small. Okay. Stay there. Nope. This one too. You know what? Yeah, we're just going to go with that. It's not going to fully cover, but that's fine. I don't need it to. I just need a little bit of extra structure. So. toenail into Luan anyway. All right. Now. We're making great guns, great progress. The question is, what's the top and what's the bottom? I think that's the top, I'm gonna to label it top. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Look at that. That's just glorious. All right. Mm. So, I'm going to hold that down.
Now it's time to label these so I can easily retrieve the things that go in them. How am I going to do that? Well, it's time to make another list. Time to make another list. And this is the list of the broad categories of staples and nails. And then it is the list of what each, is, each of those labels has on it. So. Well, that's a nice shot. I have made Here, come a little closer. I have made all the labels. I have made them on a piece of styrene, which if you can see, and you saw in the video, uh, in the time-lapse, I pre-scored. So when I'm done with all these, all I'll need to do is snap them and they'll all be ready to pop on here. One, two, three, four, five, all 32. But these labels, here you can see each one, I've got uh, 23 gauge nails, that's the measurement up top. That's the most important thing is the measurement. So it's why I put it up top, but this isn't the whole label. Oh no, because I am now going to glue an example of each of the staples and nails exactly on the label itself. Every shop I've ever seen that did that was an intuitive place that was exactly the kind of sorting and arrangement that makes me happy. I need the visual. It's all about communicating the information as fast as possible about what you need, and this is how to do it. Yeah, it's not the whoop, whoop, whoop that I wanted. Um, okay, so now it's, uh, I'm gonna do this on a time lapse because it's, a, a, you know, it's gonna take me like 40 minutes just to do this. Pull out one of each of these types of things and glue it right here with some cyanoacrylate glue. Let's get a little perspective. It is going well, and we're on the home stretch. We have every bin has an example of the staple or nail that's inside of it with the size and the type on the front. This, this is, I've been wanting this for a long time. I've been wanting one of these for a long time and finally figuring out the structure is making me very happy. I am using something that I normally don't use in the shop for a permanent solution, and that is hot glue, but I did some research and I found this specific type of hot glue um, that is a high strength glue. And I'm also, uh, if you saw in the time lapse, I've toothed up. I've just made some hatch hash marks on the plastic. Here you can see, yeah, there you go. You can see those hash marks. Those, uh, I'm putting those also on the backs of each of the labels. So I'm giving, and I'll show you what I'm doing. Scratch, scratch, sort of like five, four or five passes for each one. Let's see there. Yeah, there you go. See that? Yeah. So each one of these 18 gauge nails, this is a half inch. This is an 18 gauge nail. There I've written half inch. So I'm just gonna put a little hot glue on the back here. And I hope that between the tooth and the use of the high strength hot glue, that this will stay. It might not. I don't know what I'll do then. Maybe I'll toss in some rivets. Actually, I can toss in one rivet on each one of these. Although, I don't have the energy today. No rivets, but if any of these falls off, rivets. Okay, um, we can go back to the time lapse. Well, you saw me pull out the drill. I got all the labels on here. And then I was thinking, if I, every shop I have ever seen that had bins like this, many of them, the labels had fallen off. Every shop. I mean, I love the organizational ethos, but 
it clearly comes with a caveat, which is, you know, these are abusive environments. They're hot, they're cold, people bang around, things get thrown, things drop. And so I was thinking, ah, I should just add rivets. It's gonna take me an extra 10 minutes on this build. And frankly, it's those little decisions that I've started to make more and more and more. And they have to do with that commitment to just the right amount of craft. Like I could have not put rivets in here and it would have maybe taken me months and months and months to get around to putting rivets in there. But if you do it now, I never have to think about it again. I know that these labels will always stay there. Now the staples themselves might fall off after a few years, but that's easy to put on. The label takes a little more time. And when something takes a little more time to repair, it takes longer for you to get to that repair. So we're on the, I keep saying we're on the home stretch. Maybe I don't say it to camera, but I keep saying it to myself. Let me get out the, the rivet gun. Hmm. Okay. So now we're just gonna burn through this nice and quick. Just gonna put a you know what? I'm actually going to play. Uh, let's talk about assembly lining here. So as you notice, I kind of did every operation I did on each of these bins, kind of, I would complete the full set of operations. And the reason I do that is because assembly lining is faster than, you know, if I just took each one of these bins, drew a separate label for it, glued it on and put it in the thing. Um, and then there's this other aspect that I do, which is as I'm going, I, I manage my, let me get my thoughts in order. The other thing that might not be the obvious component of this build is information management. I talk about order of operations all the time on the mill and the lathe, um, and even with soldering brass, but it really matters here too. So first I took out all the staples and I laid them out in size order. Then I managed to make sure I had enough uh, containers to hold them all. Then once I laid them all out and put them in the containers, I made a little side label on each container so that I could double check that one, the right size was in there, the right label was going on. And each time I attached a label, I was making sure that that label was going on the bin that it should be going on. Um, that kind of, there's a famous story about uh, the, the sea change that Federal Express uh, initiated in international shipping. And the sea change that they initiated was that FedEx, I think, if I remember the story correctly, FedEx was the first company that considered the information about their package to be as important as the package itself. The package has no value unless they know where it is. And so they treated the information about where the package was with the same assiduousness that they did the packages themselves. And I, look, I, you know, when I'm doing repetitive projects like this and you've seen me do them and you've seen me screw them up, when I've screwed them up, it's because I have not been managing the information about what I've been doing. And especially when you've got like, I mean, you saw this, this is a fairly, really straightforward, simple half day build. And yet there were many opportunities for me to screw this up. Um, the other thing, to think about when you're thinking about multiples. Years ago, uh, I was working on a project with Jamie and it was a, this big uh, sphere uh, with detents all around the sphere, like I think 105. And the, the mechanical aspect of building this sphere and putting the detents on it was not um, overly difficult. But when you have 105 things to deal with, every change that you make that you have to do times 105, it's gonna suck up time. So when you have like highly repetitive projects like this, you really wanna manage your information, manage your time and know that, you know, if you have 105 things to do and you've gotta do an operation that lasts five minutes on one of them, <laughs> that's 
That's 500 minutes. That's, that's nine hours, give or take. Yeah, that's a full day. Five minutes to fix one thing, a full day to do them all. And that's if you don't stop. But realistically, it's like a couple of days. All right, now we're gonna go through and maybe they'll uh, ramp this with sound because that'll be fun. I think I'll start on the bottom. I know, I'm throwing them all over the place. That's what sweeping up is for at the end of the day. Oh, this is good. And now these are never gonna go anywhere. They just live here. I gotta tell you, when you, if you are new in the working world and you are like working for a company and you're doing a job like this, if you're bored, spitless, and kind of not paying attention, your boss is gonna notice. And if you do a job like this, but you make sure that you're getting it right and you're being assiduous, it may, it's still gonna suck, but boy, is your employer going to notice that. And if they don't notice that, if they take that kind of assiduousness for granted, they're dummies because you can't take that for granted. You have to reward it, celebrate it, give it a bonus, those kind of things. Okay, um, I'm gonna make this a non-permanent connection. I'm just going to literally put a dot, a dot, a dot, and a dot, and that'll keep it from... Did I just drop... Now, the one over here was the one that I only had like 75 nails of. Classic move. Classic move, Savage. All right. Do you want to see? Yeah, see, I didn't have nearly any 3 8 nails. This also helps me uh, inventory and make sure I know what I have in stock and what I don't. Okay. There. That's all that's spilled. Half inch. And 3 8 And the rivets go back. Bomb, 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 bomb. Yeah, time for some pretty shots. My staplers now have their easily accessible expendables sitting right next to them. The entire cabinet has come home and it lives where it is going to spend a good portion of the next several years of its life. And I'm very happy about this addition to my shop infrastructure. I've been thinking about this for a while. It's nice to finally get to it. Thank you guys for joining me for this one day build. I will see you next time. Adam Savage here in my cave with a thank you to everyone who has joined the tested channel memberships thus far. It truly allows us to keep up this high level pace of video production. And frankly, it energizes us a lot to talk to you guys. In that vein, I have also loved diving back in to doing the live stream. Specifically, tested member questions have been phenomenal. And other tested family members are going to be doing their own live stream soon. Keep an eye on this space to find out when and where. And we have also heard your feedback and we've decided to add a new membership tier at $4.99 a month that is comparable to the tested premium membership package we used to have. Members at that level will get all the supporter level perks. And in addition to that, they'll get access to our premium video archive, behind the scenes updates and members only vids. 
Of course, tested patrons still get the most access to me and the team. They get build diaries, first dibs in the Q&A, and influence in future builds that you'd like to see us make. So we hope you'll click join and find out more about tested membership levels, and we truly hope you will actually join. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.